Now, categorical syllogism is a syllogism. So it's a deductive argument that is constituted by two premises and one conclusion. All syllogisms are deductive arguments that are constituted by two premises and one conclusion. Another thing to understand about categorical syllogisms is that categorical syllogisms are syllogisms in which all the statements in the argument, the premises and the conclusion, are categorical statements. Furthermore, a standard form categorical syllogism is a categorical syllogism that is constituted by standard form categorical statements. A standard form categorical statement is a statement that clearly asserts that all or some category of things belong to or are excluded from all or some other category of things. This is what makes it a categorical statement and it's a standard form categorical statement because it has a certain type of structure that clarifies exactly what the statement is, is asserting. For this rest of this lesson, we're going to deal specifically with understanding more about categorical syllogisms. And to do that, we're going to focus on categorical statements. So there are certain components of categorical statements. First of all, there are four different types of standard form categorical statements. There's an A-type statement, and the structure of the A-type statement is all SRP. There's an E-type statement, and the structure of this type of statement is no SRP. There's an I-type statement, which structured is some SRP. And there are O-type statements, and the structure of this type of statement is some S are not P. These are all forms of standard form categorical statements. So any standard form categorical statement will take one of these four forms or structures. And here are some examples of types of statements that take these forms. All cats are mammals take the form all SRP. No cats are mammals takes the form no SRP. Some cats are mammals takes the form some SRP. And some cats are not mammals takes the form some S are not P. Now notice that all of these statements, as well as the form of these statements, have a specific word that's highlighted in purple. That word, or those words, are referred to as quantifiers. All, no, some. They state something about a quantity of things. So for an A-type statement, the quantifier is the word all, and it asserts something about all the things that are cats. For the E-type statement, the quantifier is no, and it asserts something about no cats. And both I and O-type statements have the quantifier sum, which asserts something about at least one thing that belongs in the subject term of those statements. Another thing to realize about categorical statements is that they all have subject terms. The subject term is always in the first position here represented by the variable s. Now, the subject term is the term that the statement is about. So if we have a statement like all cats are mammals, that statement is about cats. And it's stating something about cats, that they are mammals. For no cats are mammals, the statement is about, again, cats. For some cats are mammals, and for some cats are not mammals, again, in both of these statements, the subject term is cats, and the statement is saying something about cats. Another thing that all standard form categorical statements have is a predicate term. The predicate term is represented by the letter P, and notice how it takes the last position in all of these statement types. So in an A, E, I, and O type, the predicate term is always at the end of the statement. The predicate term is a term that is being applied to the subject term in each of these statements. So for a statement like all cats are mammals, cats is the subject term and mammals is the predicate term. And it's the predicate term because this is what the statement is saying of the subject, cats. The statement all cats are mammals are saying that all cats are mammals. Uh, for the statement no cats are mammals, it's saying that no cats are mammals. For some cats are mammals, it's saying that some cats, cats being the subject term, are mammals. And for some cats are not mammals, it's saying that some cats, 
the subject term, are not mammals, the predicate term. Another thing to recognize about these terms is that both subject and predicate terms are always plural nouns. Cats are the subject term of each of these statements, and it is a plural noun. It's about a category of things, cats. And mammals, which is the predicate of each of these um, statements, mammals is a plural noun as well. It is about a category of things, mammals. Fifth, you should understand that all standard form categorical statements have what is referred to as copulas. A copula is the word are or are not, and it's a verb that basically brings together both the subject term and the predicate term, okay? So notice how for A, E, I type statements, the copula is always R, and for the O type statement, the copula is R not. For the O type statement, it is the only standard form categorical statement that has not as the copula. Finally, Standard form categorical statements have terms which also have term complements. Now, term complements are not necessarily components of statements, and that's why I have a little star at that end of that statement. Each term has a corresponding term complement, um, and then there's that star there. What they are are terms that are complements of um, the terms that are in a categorical statement. Term complements are terms that comprise the category of things that are not constituted by the predicate term or the subject term. So I'm going to enter the frame in order to show you a little more clearly what I mean about term complements. So notice how we have this statement here, all cats are mammals. Cats is uh, the subject term and mammals is the predicate term. Now cats is talking about all the things that are cats, okay? The term complement to the term cats is non-cats. Non-cats constitutes all the things that are not cats. So it is also a category of things. The category that makes them up is basically all the things that are not cats. Mammals is talking about all the things that are mammals. So that's the category of things that the predicate term actually refers to. The term complement to mammals is non-mammals. So non-mammals is a term complement which represents all the things that are basically not what the predicate term is referring to. So non-mammals is a term complement of mammals, okay? And we'll see that this is the case with all these other statements as well, specifically because they have all the same terms. The subject term for each of these statements here is always cats. And the predicate term for each of these statements here is mammals. So you'll have the same term complements. The term complement for cats in each of these are non-cats. And the term complements for mammals for each of these are non-mammals. Okay? So that's what we mean by term complements. Term complements are basically uh, represents the category of things that the term it is a complement to does not represent. So for, again, um, if you have the subject term being cats, the term complement to that term is non-cats. And if you have the predicate term mammals, the term complement for that is non-mammals, okay? Now, other than these various components of categorical statements, categorical statements also have various attributes. So they have the attribute of quantity, quality, and term distribution. When we're talking about quantity, we're asking whether or not the statements are universal or particular. And when we're talking about quality, we're asking whether or not the statements are affirmative or negative. And when we're talking about distribution, we're actually talking about the terms that make up the statement, so the predicate term or the subject term, and we're asking whether or not these terms are distributed. So we're going to focus for now on quantity and quality. And here we have an example of a A-type statement, all cats are mammals, and as we've spoken about before, these statements have a subject term and a predicate term. The subject term is cats and the predicate term is mammals. Now for an A-type statement, it has a universal quantity and a positive quality. 
The reason why it has a universal quantity is because it's talking about all the things that are cats. So it's talking about all the things that are represented by the subject term. The reason why it's a positive quality is because it's asserting something positive about cats, specifically that they are all mammals. We can also have an E-type statement, and this, unlike the A-type statement, is negative in quality. However, it is still universal. The reason why it's universal, again, is because it states something about all the things that are represented by the subject term. In this specific case, it's stating that all the things that are cats are not mammals. In other words, no cats are mammals. So this is a universal statement as well, just like our A-type statement. However, it's negative in quality because it's making a negative assertion. It's saying that all the things that are cats are not mammals. Now, we also have an I-type statement um, with the form some SRP. And notice how in this type of statement, the quantity is particular. However, the quality is positive, just like our A-type statement. The reason why the quality is positive is because this statement, like the A-type statement, also asserts a positive claim. However, unlike the A-type statement, its quantity is particular because it's not talking about all the things that the subject term represents. It's only talking about some of the things. So it's only talking about some cats, not all cats. So here we have a particular um, quantity. In logic, the word sum is understood to represent at least one thing that exists. So the statement some cats are mammals is asserting that at least one thing that exists is a cat and a mammal. Okay. Now contrast this with the O-type statement. The O-type statement is also a particular statement because the quantity of that statement is about at least one thing that exists that's a cat. So it's talking about only some things that are cats, not all the things that are cats. This is why it has a particular quantity. However, this type of statement, unlike the I-type statement, has a negative quality. And the reason why it has a negative quality is because it asserts a negative claim. It's saying that some cats are not mammals, rather than the I-type statement, which makes a positive claim that some cats are mammals. So these are the quantities and qualities of standard form categorical statements. Now, there are two different interpretations of categorical statements. There's the Aristotelian traditional interpretation, and then there's the Boolean modern interpretation. In this course, we'll focus specifically on the Boolean modern interpretation, so you don't really have to worry about the Aristotelian Boolean interpretation. But to kind of clarify what we mean by Boolean interpretation versus Aristotelian interpretation, I'm going to have to talk a little bit about Aristotelian uh, interpretation. Now before we can discuss these different interpretations, what we need to understand is what it means for a statement to have existential import. A statement has existential import if it presupposes the existence of certain kinds of objects. So what do we mean by this? A statement has existential import if it's the case that it is asserting that something exists, okay? So if that statement is suggesting that whatever it is it's talking about is something that actually exists, then it has existential import. The Boolean modern interpretation basically suggests that only particular statements are understood to have existential import, whereas the Aristotelian interpretation actually suggests that both universal and particular statements have existential import. So according to the Boolean interpretations, statements like all cats are mammals or no cats are mammals don't actually assert something or assume that cats actually exist. Whereas statements like some cats are mammals and some cats are not mammals are actually asserting or presupposing that cats exist. Aristotelian interpretation, on the other hand, asserts that all four of those statements make existential claim, have existential import. 
So I'm going to step into the frame here a little bit to kind of further show you what I mean. Now we have two statements here, all cats are mammals and some cats are mammals. Both these statements are actually true, okay? It is true that all cats are mammals and it's true that some cats are mammals. Now, the first statement, all cats are mammals, is a universal statement. It's stating something about all the things that are cats. And the statement, some cats are mammals, is a particular statement. It's stating something about just some of the things that are cats. Now, these statements are both true according to both the Aristotelian and Boolean interpretation. For the Boolean interpretation, however, the claim all cats are mammals does not have existential import. In other words, it's not asserting anything about cats existing. However, the claim some cats are mammals does have existential import. It is asserting something about cats existing. According to the Aristotelian interpretation, both of these claims have existential import. In other words, both of these claims are asserting that something exists, specifically cats. Now, although there is no difference with these kinds of statements between the Boolean interpretation and the Aristotelian interpretation, there is a difference when we have statements like this. So consider all unicorns are horned creatures and some unicorns are horned creatures. Here, we have a universal claim, all unicorns are horned creatures, because it's stating something about all the things that are uni unicorns. And we have a particular claim, some unicorns are horned creatures, because it's stating something about some unicorns, okay, not all. Now, when you think about these two statements and ask yourself, are they true or false, you might have the following intuition. The statement, all unicorns are horned creatures, is actually true. And the statement, some unicorns are horned creatures, is actually false. The reason for that is because we think that it's true that all unicorns are horned creatures. If there's a unicorn, then it should be a horned creature. But it's not the case that there exists any unicorn such that at least one thing exists that's a unicorn and a horned creature. So we think that this is false. Now this is what the modern Boolean interpretation actually gives us. It gives us the claim that all unicorns are horned creatures is actually true. The reason why it's true is because it does not make an existential claim. It doesn't have existential import. The statement all unicorns are horned creatures doesn't say that unicorns exist. But the statement some unicorns are horned creatures is making an existential claim because it's a particular claim. It is saying that there is at least one thing that exists as a unicorn that has horns. Now for the Aristotelian interpretation, both of these statements would actually be false. The reason for that is because according to the traditional Aristotelian standpoint, both universal and particular claims make or have existential import. So the statement, all unicorns are horn creatures, according to the Aristotelian interpretation, is saying that unicorns exist, and this is not the case. So according to the Aristotelian interpretation, both of these statements would be false. Because intuitively we think that all unicorns are horn creatures is a true claim, if something were a unicorn, then it would have horns. Um, we would take the modern Boolean interpretation. And we're going to stick with the modern Boolean interpretation throughout this course. So anytime you come across categorical statements, uh, interpret them through the modern Boolean interpretation. Okay?